Hello, and welcome to episode 41 of A Week in Watches, a weekly look back at notable stories and releases from the world of watches. I'm your host, Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound. Thanks for joining me. This week, we have a lot of limited editions. Actually, all but one story is about a limited edition. What can I say? I don't plan when things come out. I just talk about them. Regardless, should you enjoy this content, this show, this channel, or perhaps my winning personality, please do like and subscribe. It helps us out with the algorithms and such. Plus, we appreciate it. This week's sponsor is the Wind Up Watch Up, worn around retail site, which is full of awesome watches, accessories, everyday carry, and more. Some recent highlights from the shop are the new Autodromo Group C digital watches, which will transport you back to the 80s, even if that's when you were a kid. The Zodiac X Rowing Blazers Super Seawolf, which for a limited time includes a Zodiac hat, a US made adapt strap and Mai Tai, and a strap changing tool with purchase. And the recently added Ben Roos watches, which combine vintage charm with military provenance, rugged builds, and great prices. Check those out and more at windupwatchshop.com. Now, on with the show. Christopher Ward collaborates on a duo of do-gooders. UK's Christopher Ward, who is still riding high on the success of their C1 Bel Canto, has announced a duo of textured watches made in collaboration with charities. Both based on the C63 Sealander model, they are the first to feature Christopher Ward's in-house SH21 movement in the Sealander line. For those unaware, well before their chiming mechanism, back in 2014, Christopher Ward did something equally, or perhaps even more, amazing. They launched an in-house, or at least proprietary, movement. By which I mean, they had designed it and had it manufactured, if not literally, in their own house. Semantics aside, the fairly under the radar brand at the time launched a five day chronometer certified movement and put it in a watch that was just a hair over 2K. Very impressive stuff that was sadly kind of ignored by a lot of watch media, except for us, of course. But back to the now. Christopher Ward has announced the C63 SH21 Blue Marine and Snow Leopard models both with their in-house caliber in automatic setup and with power reserve, sub-seconds, and date complications. The Blue Marine is made in collaboration with the Blue Marine Foundation, helping them deal with ocean plastics. While the title isn't the most exciting, it features a vibrant teal dial with a stamped wave pattern for added depth and motion, which certainly is exciting. The Snow Leopard is made in collaboration with the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, who work to help preserve snow leopard populations across Mongolia and Kyrgyzstan. This version is white with blue and black accents and, you guessed it, a leopard print texture on the dial, which is more subtle and tasteful than it might sound. Both models come in at 41 by 48.2 millimeters and are 13.1 millimeters thick. Both have a starting price of 1925 with 5% of their proceeds going to their respective charities. This is truly a fantastic price for a five-day in-house chronometer. I don't think anything else is actually quite in the ballpark. Both watches are limited to 150 pieces and went on sale on March 16th. Hopefully they are still available at the time this was published. Sorry if not, my efforts towards getting brands to release on the A Week in Watches schedule aren't going so well, but I'll keep trying. Resence resurfaces with a new color. Okay, this one is a quickie. Last year around the same time, Belgian's Resence, everyone's favorite independent watchmaker with an orbital regulator display, launched the Type 8C. Their simplest, in a sense, watch to date, it reduced their ever in motion dial to just hour and minutes. Housed in an all titanium case that measures just 43 millimeters, but wears far smaller, it's also incredibly light at 42 grams on a strap. An example of less being more, the Type 8C was an instant hit and one of my personal favorite watches from last year's Watches and Wonders. While perhaps, or definitely, less exciting than a whole new model, for this year, Resence has announced the Type 8S. And that's not S for sport, but rather for sage. Yes, it's a new dial color and a damn fine one, if you ask me. A subtle, pale green, it's light, lovely, and different. It's not your typical green dial, which tend to be in the forest, jade, or olive territory. Rather, it's a soft, airy green that the mere sight of has me imagining a cool breeze somewhere relaxing. <sighs> just imagine it. I just love it. And to be honest, the blue of last year's Type 8C was probably my least favorite aspect of the watch, as it just wasn't a unique shade of blue though it was also perfectly nice. 
The Type 8 is also the brand's least expensive model, coming in at 12,500 Swiss francs or around 13,700 USD at time of recording. I can't wait to see this in just a few weeks, so be sure to check back in. Our watch enthusiast friends at Fratello over in the Netherlands have teamed up with Nevada Grenchen for a new series of limited edition chronographs, and we're into it. Just called the Nevada Grenchen Racing Chronographs, rather than being a revival of any specific watch, they combine vintage elements that the Fratello team likes into one new design. And, of course, uses Fratello's signature orange for accents. Measuring 38 by 44.3 by 13.75 millimeters, these mechanical chronographs feature manually wound Salita SW510 MB calibers. The cases are barrel shaped with squared off lug gaps for an almost skin diver look and feature wide polished bevels on the otherwise brushed mid case. A polished steel bezel with an engraved tachometer drives home the racing style of the case. There are five, yes five, different options for this collaboration but all are based on the same classic layout with a racing index along the outer edge, three subdials, rectangular loom plots, and those orange accents. What changes are the general colors, though they stay in a pretty classic range as well. There is all black, all white, white panda, black panda, and all brown. Can't really go wrong with any, but the all brown is my personal favorite. Priced at 1,499 euros, or about 1,600 USD at time of recording, they are quite a good value for a Swiss mechanical chronograph. The Nevada Grenchen Chronograph X Fratello are limited to 50 units total, so only 10 per color, making each quite rare in the scheme of things. Luckily, they haven't gone on sale quite yet, launching March 20th, 4 p.m. Central European time via Fratello's shop with delivery in June. I have a feeling these will go quick, so don't miss out. Messina and Angelus team up for a dive into the archive. Angelus is one of those brands that people either know and love dearly or have never heard of at all. There really is not much of an in-between. A collector's vintage brand with obscure and unique designs, especially chronographs, typically from the first half of the 20th century, like the gorgeous triple calendar chrono dado, and well, the watch we'll see in just a bit. They were resurrected by Le Jeu Pere in 2011 as an entirely different concept. Their first model after relaunch was called the U10 Tourbillon Lumiere, and despite having seemingly no connection to the historic brand, was a stunning display of watchmaking. Featuring a wide rectangular case with a dial on one side and a tourbillon floating in a glass box on the other, it, if anything, it looked like the work of a high-end independent such as Armin Strom or Hotlands. Since then, they've continued on the modern high-end path of bombastic tourbillons and chronographs until now, with the launch of the first watch in their La Fabrique collection. Arguably what they should have been making since relaunch, La Fabrique will be a series of limited edition revivals of historically significant models likely elevated to high luxury standards. For the first piece, they've teamed up with Messina Lab in what seems to be a historical consulting capacity to create the Chronograph Medical Monopusher Chronograph. Based on a model from the 1960s, this stripped down chronograph eliminates minutes and hour counters to put the focus on seconds and two corresponding indexes for medical use. First is a pulsation scale calibrated to 10 beats, which is uncommonly low. The scale seen from around 1 to 3 is then color-coded red, black, and green to indicate severity of the pulse, though hopefully a doctor using this watch would be aware of such things. A separate asthmometer or respiration scale is located between the hour markers and minute chronoseconds track, which is calibrated to 5 respirations. This isn't color coded, so hopefully the doctor knows how many breaths is the correct number, I guess. How many breaths am I supposed to be taking? I've uh, never really thought about it. This watch would freak me out. Anyway, the rest of the dial is fairly sparse with a sub seconds at nine that is very, very close to the center of the dial. A bit too close if you ask me. But that's fine because it doesn't distract from the best element on the dial which is the huge arrow pointing to the respiration scale. Just look at that glorious thing. It's like it was hand drawn on the dial after print, just haphazardly crossing the minute seconds index. Not a care in the world. And I love it. The Chronograph Medical is powered by the A5000 manual wound column wheel mono pusher and is sized at 39 millimeters, but only 9.22 millimeters thick. Apparently the original version was 37mm, which I wish they had stuck to, though 39mm isn't too big, and well, 
It's a very expensive watch, so not really an issue for me. Limited to 99 pieces, the Chronograph Medical X Messina Lab is priced at 19,900 USD and is available now on Messina Lab's website and authorized retailers. And that's it for this episode of A Week in Watches. We hope you enjoyed it. Please do head to our sponsor, windupwatchup.com. Also be sure to go to warnaround.com daily for news, reviews, and everything else about watches. We'll see you next time.